Hey guys, a huge ton of thanks for 5600 plus subscribers. I did not expect to reach here, but yeah, I am overwhelmed. And I'm quite certain that 10,000 mark is not far away. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing to the channel and keep sharing. And hey, please don't judge me on those Pokemons. Now most of us wants to make good quality videos, which also take a good amount of time. There are a lot of softwares like Adobe Premiere Pro, Vegas Pro and many more. But then why Filmora? Well, I personally prefer Filmora for editing my YouTube videos since anyone can learn and master it in just one hour. Others have professional grade requirements and may take a lot of time to get learned and familiar with. Also, you can edit videos directly from your phone with help of many applications out there. But if you are looking for a middle road, then Filmora is your perfect tool. Now by the time I was making this tutorial video, Filmora had released its latest version with version 10 or X with 9.4 in the end. Please do check out from the Filmora website, the link for the Filmora is given in the description down below. By the time application is loading up, let me tell you the minimum configuration needed for Windows as well as Mac. I did not find anything that says it can be used on Linux, so yeah, go ahead, pause the video and check if your system meets the minimum requirements. Once the app has loaded, what you see here is your welcome screen. The left side would have an option to create a new project or to open the save projects which can also be seen at the right side of the panel. Other than that, there is an option for you to select the type of project you are going to work with. It would be for a YouTube video or an Instagram video or a video that is in portrait mode. I will select the 16 by 9 aspect ratio which is selected by default and it is most used ratio for YouTube. Now what you see here is your layout for the workspace where all the magic will happen. The top right black colored box is your media and project preview window. And on the left side is where you keep and import all the necessary files that are going to be used in your project. Finally, in the bottom is your timeline. All of these can be resized to suit your ease of viewing and editing the video. Don't worry. I have given the list of timestamps and the title in the description so that you can follow along. With that being said, let's not waste any more time and get on with this tutorial. Now any project needs something to get it started. And a VG project needs images, videos, footage and sound. To import, just double click or Click on the plus icon and locate the file like this. You can also use the application to record from your webcam, from your screen or you can do a voiceover. It can also import from your camera or your phone. But wait, that is quite tedious if you ask me. What I generally do is that I create a folder under which I keep all the necessary files for the project and then import them all at once. I find this method quite easy and time saving. Another point is. Filmora got you covered with few of the sample videos like countdowns and the colors so that you don't have to google it and download a solid color image for your videos. Now if you notice over here, there are little icons on the file you just imported in the project. These icons tell you that the file category that you are going to deal with like a picture, a video or an audio file. The view can also be changed 
into thumbnails or a list but I keep it as I like it the way they are. To preview a video footage or an audio, just double click on the file and the same would be shown in the preview window. If you try to preview an image file, that would always show you a preview of 5 seconds which is default. It can be changed from editing panel under preference options or better, you can do it from the timeline. The preview window does take a lot of computing power if you are previewing a clip in its full quality. It is always wise to lower it as per your need and as per your system. Now to import anything in the timeline, you can click on the little plus icon on the file which I never use myself. Another method you can use is that you can select your desired part. With the help of mark in, shortcut for which is I, and then mark out which is O, in and out, quite simple. A trimmed clip will be imported and then you will see the media match pop up. This is where you can pause and read the description and then continue. The footage can also be dragged from the ends to extend or shorten. To be honest, this is also the method I generally don't like. The reason being that somewhere in the project that if you try to reuse the same footage, for some reason, then it would remember the part you chose at the very first time and it would reinsert the very same clip that can be seen over here as well. To solve that, just right click on the mark out icon, then select clear mark in and out. Since you can directly trim the clip on the timeline, you can prefer not to use it like me. Did you notice the red line right above your timeline? This is because whenever you bring a footage that is imported as it is, and needs to be synchronized with the preview and the project settings. This is why we have a render button. Like previewing, rendering is also a resource hogging process, but it is necessary because it shows how your video output going to look alike. Post rendering, the preview will also be smooth. So expect it to be seen for a handful number of times in this tutorial.
Now, let's another footage in the timeline. As you can see, the red line reappears right above the footage we just imported. Render again. and the lines will turn into the green ones, telling you that they are now in sync with the project and the timeline. This vertical red line that you see over here is your playhead. It shows you the exact frame location from where the preview is being viewed. If it comes upon a blank space like this, all you would see is a black screen in the preview. This is where we use the ripple delete option to remove any gaps between two clips. Now after a while you realize that you chose the wrong project settings as you wanted to make an Instagram video but went with 16 by 9. Filmora got you covered here as well. All you got to do is go to the icon that looks like a computer and then select change project aspect ratio. This would open the option to change the screen size ratio, the resolution and the frame rate of the project. If you are interested in learning about the frames and what they are, here is a card for you to check out. The same setting can also be accessed from the project settings under file menu. But wait. What are these black boxes doing in your preview window? Red line also reappears. Since the aspect ratio doesn't match, the black boxes which fill in the area like for a movie which is made in 21 by 9 ratio and you are trying to view it on a 16 by 9 screen. To solve this, just right click and select the crop to fit option and then it will remove these black boxes. The sun gets off centered over here. You can also use the crop tool to manually select the area you want to be viewed in the video. Pan and zoom options are also available over here. So now, I will change my project back to YouTube. Now what good video editor that would be if it doesn't have a chroma key or popularly known as green screen. Green screen is nothing new. Most of your favorite movies or shows like Avengers and Game of Thrones and many more are created with the help of green screens. It is light on pocket and easy to make. The only caveat here is that the green screen footage should be made properly. Try to look up for movies with bad green screens you will be able to find thousands of them. To use it, drop your green screen footage right above the main video and then select the green screen from the toolbar or right click and choose the option.
If you notice over here, that sunset color got changed a bit. Take a look. Here is the frame before that green screen footage is loaded and now here it is on the footage. To have this sorted, use the controls in green screen panel to make it look good. Fine tune it to be in sync with your main footage. You can always revert it back if you mess up or click reset if you are not happy with all the changes you made. The color picker tool is here for you to select other colors if you happen to have a blue screen footage. You can also use the transform tools to resize, flip and rotate the green screen clip as per your choice. The X and Y inputs are here to place and position the clip. Let us render the project and see how it looks. That seems right to me. If it doesn't work for you, you might want to pay a visit to the green screen settings or just try a different green screen footage. Now you can't make an editor work in a single timeline. Filmora here uses two types of layers, the video layers which can also use images and then the audio layer which can only use music and sounds. You can't insert a video or an image in the audio lane and the same goes for audio in video lane. Here the same crop and fit can be used to cover the media below the image. Take it as an advice, 
use crop to fit every time for every file you put in timeline because you might not see the problem right away but you will be pulling your hair out if you find a minor mistakes of the wrong layering after giving a lot of working hours in a project Whatever clip or image on top will be shown in the preview and in the output if you choose it to be. Now, I have seen lots of Filmora tutorials which don't talk about this very important thing. There could be instances where you could be working with large videos and when you try to drop something on your main track, this is what you might end up with. The first footage gets split into two which I did not wish to happen. This might be missed easily in bigger projects and then all your hard work would go in vain. There are two ways to have this done right. First, you can be careful enough to choose where you are dropping your file. Or the second option that you can lock the track which does not need any change for that moment. This would put a comic book like shade on the track. Believe me, this is a lifesaver and once you get a hang of it, you will love this. Now we aren't living in 40s, are we? So there can be awkward silent videos like the good old days. Filmora gives you a lot of non-copyright audio tracks to choose from. Well, you can be importing your own if you have it, but in situations where you don't, the pre-included ones are not going to disappoint you.
Now on certain times where you could have a piece of footage that has the audio you want to use it for your video, like a background music, a dialogue from a movie, or a sound effect that you can't find anywhere but in a video. To get that, just drag the desired video which has the audio you need Crop and delete the parts you don't want and then from the options select the option called detach audio. This would split the audio and video in two separate lanes and the audio will be pushed into the audio layer which can be seen in the waveform in the timeline. You can further trim or cut the video as per your choice. This is the best when you got a footage of an interview and due to some issues, the audio doesn't match with the video. You can have them both separated and then match them accordingly. The volume of the audio can be increased or decreased, like this. This will come handy for using the background music for your videos. Now let me show you some advanced editing tools which you are going to use a lot. You can also slide up or down to increase or decrease. The waveform would change the same way. You can use the dial to balance out the audio between the left and right profiles.
Another thing that I like to use pretty often is the fade in and fade out feature. You wouldn't like a music that catches you by surprise, would you? Use the fade in to gradually increase the volume and fade out to dim it slowly. You can use the anchors on the audio track to activate the fade in and fade out options which works the same as the controls available in advanced audio options. This also includes the control to change the pitch of the audio file. Based on what you need, you can have it increased or decreased. This has also a feature to remove your background noises, but that too something I would not recommend all the time. It is better to make it is better to make arrangements where you can record a clean audio, as using this feature will remove the noise, but you will be talking like a robot to your people. Now if all videos could be made with bells and whistles, you have to have names and details for what you are making the videos for. It could be a product or it could be a person and what not. This is where titles come in picture. Filmora gives you a wide options to choose from like openers, titles, lower thirds, subtitles and end credits. This would give your viewers the details about something that you are trying to show or present in your video. Another thing which cannot be missed is the use of markers. These markers as named can be used to point a frame or a location in the timeline. Like if you want to insert or split or do anything on a certain point, it can be named and color coded for the ease of it. and it also can be dragged for a different location if you need it.
Now back to the titles. These titles can be dragged on your timeline And then from the advanced menu, you can make the necessary changes as per your requirement. Well, be informed that these are available to download from Filmora and are subject to subscriptions. From the advanced menu, you can change the appearance of the title, the font color, the size of the font. There are a handful of presets for you to choose from. You can also change the animation used to showcase in the video as how these titles will appear in your video. If you wish, you can also create one for yourself and then save it as a custom title and it will be shown in the custom category in the title as you can see over here. This will save a lot of time for you if you are trying to use the same title over and over again just like your name in a video.
let us talk about transitions now without the transitions the videos you are going to make would seem a bit jagged and rough as moving through one clip to another would be sudden and it would not look good luckily you can count on pre included transitions too if you are not looking at something fancy transitions in filmora work for title images and of course the video tracks you can double click on a transition to preview how a transition would be to use select and drag the transition between the two clips or at the beginning of the clip or at the end of the clip depending upon your requirement you can increase or decrease the transition time by dragging the end of the transition if you drop a transition on top of another one it would have it replaced the transition include the basic ones 3d ripple and more can be downloaded post subscription of additional packs The dissolve transition here is my most favorite one. You can mark your favorite ones with the heart and it will show under favorite category from the top left side. Using the effects is another charm that you can add into your videos. The effect tab not only have color filters but also the LUTs and movie color presets. The most important thing here is to correctly choose the color scheme or your video would look quite awkward. You can always double click to check the preview of the effects before using it. The effects can be dropped above the main video clips and more than one can be used for a single one. But if you directly drop one onto the clip, it would work only for the entire single clip. You can control the intensity of the color effects if you double click on the effect that is applied on your clip.
and if you wish you can use effects like mirror flip blur and more for some funky looks What are elements you ask? Well, if you recall at the beginning of this video tutorial, there was an animated emoji. This is a place where you can find more than just animated emojis. Short GIF files, GIF or GIF, that's up to you. These may help your videos to stand out from the crowd. Badges, animal stickers, hand drawn icon and lot more can be used to decorate your video but then again using them sensibly is all you need otherwise you might end up using these to distract than to convey the message in your video. More at Filmora with subscription of course. Just drag and drop the element above the video, the one you wish to use and it will be applied for the duration of the element. The duration is different for each element and those cannot be increased but you can have them decreased. If you would have seen my laptop or computer upgrade video, then you already know what is a split screen. If you don't, here is a card for you to watch that video. From different options available, you can use more than one video clips in the same screen, all played at the same time. As usual, just drop the ones you want to use in your timeline. And once you do, you can see the option to drop additional clips in your preview window. You will also get a mini toolbox on the clips to edit them. And as always, if you drag the ends, you will be able to control the duration of the split screen. You will also get advanced menu to fine tune your clips in the split screen. Unlike the transition, where you can drop one on the another to change, here if you wish to change the number of screens, you will have to delete them and then drop a new one that you want to use.
If you have watched the video till here, then hold on. This is not the end of the tutorial. But if this video helps you to understand Filmora, then please do consider subscribing to the channel. These videos take a lot of time and I guess it deserves a like and your comments. Since this would have been an end of our video, but as there are additional features added into Filmora X, the following are the new features I'm going to show you. Now this feature was entire reason I installed Adobe on my system, but now Filmora made it easier. It is still not perfect I would say, but it gets the job done. To use motion tracking, drop a text with the help of titles and adjust it so that it doesn't overlap anything or goes out of the borders. Now select the main timeline clip and choose motion tracking. you'll be able to see a small rectangle in the preview window which will have a plus like symbol in the center. You can adjust the size of the rectangle as this is the area will be used for tracking. Click on start tracking and it would process how the motion tracking would be in the end. Once the process finishes, you will find a drop down option where you can select the title we just created. I would recommend to adjust the duration of the title as once the tracking area goes out of the frame, the title we are using will keep crawling in the exit point. At this point, I completely forgot to lock the main footage and now there is a black line in the bottom of the preview screen because the main clip shifted above a little. Now once you have finished rendering the clip, you can see how motion tracking has worked. I was just curious and then I came to know that motion tracking can also work with images too. All you gotta do is that instead of creating a title, directly go for the option of motion tracking. Once the tracking path has been mapped, from the drop down menu, select import from computer. As you see here, I have given some Wi-Fi in the lighthouse, so that people here can watch this tutorial. Hehe, <laughs> sad joke.
Now if you don't wish to use the motion tracking, just select the option and uncheck the box for motion tracking and it will delete the data it collected for motion tracking. Go ahead, try some of the motion tracking on your own. You'll be amazed how easy it is. What is keyframing? Why you should use keyframing? Let's find out. If you wish to animate something, then keyframing is your tool to go. I will be using the same Wi-Fi icon for this. I have imported this in my timeline and now I will adjust the size and the positions. Now right above the transform options we just use for the icon, there we see a tab for animation. The same can be accessed with a right click on the media by selecting keyframing. Under the animation tab, you can find few presets for the animation and then you can find the option for the customization. Once you click on add, you will see a dot appearing on the media we want to animate. This is your start point for the animation. Now move the playhead to your desired location and then make the changes to the media you want to see at the end of the animation. I am keeping it simple, so I will just increase the side and just move the icon to a different place. You can see another dot is appearing on the media. You can add as more as you wish, it takes a bit practice to get familiar with.
Now we have audio ducking with us. What is audio ducking you ask? Let me show you how it works instead of explaining what it is. But for that, let me just import a background music track. and this footage for the most famous interview. If you have noticed, the waveform of the audio got decreased where the video has the audio. Don't see it yet? Let me mute few parts of the interview. Do you see the wave now? Now let's see what it did. I leave it on you guys how well it worked. Another great feature added by Filmora is the color matching. What it does that it takes a source frame, figures out the color scheme and then applies it to the selected clip to match the color tones. As you can see here, I have two clips where the sunset which has an orange tone and then and then the clip of the lighthouse which has grey hue. The left side of the color matching panel is your source and in the right, well, you know the story. Once you are done matching, you can see the comparison view in the right side and the toggle to control the intensity. If you see over here, this is an example how a good footage can be ruined with a wrong color scheme. Let's get this done once again and this time we do this right way.
as you see the change in the sunset color made it a cloudy gray sky just like the footage of the lighthouse it looks good to me do let me know in the comment section if you think the same Do I need to tell you what shortcuts are? With the 10th version of Filmora, now you can create your own shortcuts to edit faster. To access, go to the file menu and select keyboard shortcuts. Here, you'll be able to see shortcuts tagged in different tabs as per their specific functions. As you can see, the shortcut gets changed as I hit the keys. I will select the B key to act as my shortcut for splitting the clip. Does it work? Yes, it does. Now in case you want to get back to the default shortcuts, just go to the keyboard shortcuts once again and select restore defaults and then it would get back to the default ones. Now everything is getting cloaked in black and white, yep, I am talking about the light and dark modes. Some people prefer dark and some prefer... Ugh. So here is how you can change the appearance. Go to the file and choose preferences. There in the general tab, you can select the dark, light and the system default mode. Honestly, this stresses my eyes out. So I would go back to the dark mode because I would go dark mode for about anything I have. My smartphone, to my Windows 10, to my clothes, to my soul. Sorry, I got carried away.
at last we are now at exporting exporting means to pack everything what we did in the project and then finalize the video which can be uploaded to youtube or anywhere you want once you have clicked export you can see all these options you can locally save the video or export on the basis of devices if you wish you can directly have it uploaded to your youtube channel which i would never recommend to i always prefer the local and the mp4 option i give the name to the video and let the output stay at the default location in the pc the video is of 1920 by 1080 resolution the frame rate size and duration are also mentioned but what is the need of setting over here you are given three options for quality which is best better and good toggling between the same changes your bitrate a bitrate is nothing but the amount of data encoded for a unit of time you can choose it manually as well the increased frame rate and the higher bitrate has increased the size of the file i tend to have the gpu acceleration box checked just in case now click export Now based on the muscles of your system the exporting time would vary and in the when done option you can instruct your system to do nothing or to notify you with a sound or if the exporting time is going to cost you sleep you can select shutdown and you can rest and sleep peacefully so when the video is ready the system won't stay up and shut itself down to save energy click on the find target to go to the video you just created With this topic we come to an end to our tutorial. The reason I'm covering this because none of the tutorials talk about this. Saving your project is important because there could be days where you get to shoot your videos in parts and on various dates and with every addition the editing also follows along. To save your project click control S or select the save project option in the file menu. You can also use the save icon on the top of preview window. but i leave that for you to decide which one you want to use the project will be saved in your project folder no brainer here type the name of the project and click save the file format for the save project is wfp which is wonder share filmora project 
If your Filmora crashes because of any random reason, then you got to locate the last auto saved backup file which will be prompted to you when you launch the Filmora after crash. The good people at Filmora are smart, they already thought of this and got you covered. You know who else is good and smart? It is the people who watched this tutorial till the end, liked it and have subscribed to my channel because they know it takes good amount of effort to make something useful and I hope this Filmora tutorial turns out to be one for you. This is all for today. Do let me know if this tutorial helped you. Since this is the first project which took me 3 weeks to plan and execute and I would love to see your feedback on this video directly in the comment section or you can reach out to me on my social media links for which the links are given in the description. With that being said, this is Chandan signing out and I will see you in the next video.